Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Burns. This is Sarta Chaudhry, uh, and we are presenting Civi. Civi is a social network uh, designed to enhance communication between residents and elected officials and also among residents themselves. A uh, bit of background, um, Sartage has been building apps and cool stuff uh, as a software engineer for about 10 years. I am an attorney by trade, uh, did a career shift um, to get into politics a couple years ago, ran for Congress and was the campaign manager for a local campaign last year uh, and am getting into tech myself now. Uh, so, um, with the head in the clouds, feet on the ground approach, we are dreaming big, right? We want to redefine how government works. How do you talk to your legislature? Um, we want to revolutionize politics. Um, eventually, one day, 20 years down the line, a path towards a direct democracy so we don't need politicians at all, right? Uh, but we are starting small and manageable, and basically, we are just building a civics-focused fo social media site where... There are only humans, right? So no companies, no ads, uh, and verification, not only that you are a person, but that you have an address. Um, not that we're going to publish your address, but um, we want to have geographically sensitive polling um, so that, uh, for example, a politician can know if he's asking, if they're asking a question about something that they're voting on, that these are my actual constituents who live in my area. Um, and then we want to build that and then get buy-in from local elected officials and then go from there. Politics is kind of a, a dirty word in a lot of ways. And one of the reasons is it's very confusing and there's a lot of definitions for it. I like Robin Williams uh, from poly, a Latin word meaning many, and ticks meaning blood-sucking creatures. Uh, it's a fun definition. It's a pretty accurate definition uh, depending on uh, you know who you talk to. Um, maybe a more succinct and simple one uh, is George Bush's uh, clarification that he is the decider, he decides what's best. And at its core, that's what politics is, right? It's who makes the decision, right? How much do we spend here? How much do we spend here? What's legal? What's not illegal? What do we enforce? What do we not enforce, right? Uh, it comes down to power. And so one of my favorite kind of ways of thinking about this was uh, from a book called uh, Sur about surveillance uh, capitalism. And the author laid out, laid out uh, the study of power with these three questions, right? You have to ask three questions when you're thinking about power. Who decides, right? In our system, that's the elected officials. Who decides who decides? In our system, that is the voters. And then who knows what is going on? And in our system, um, well-informed is in quotes. Obviously, we're in a truth-deprived uh, era, right, where there's a lot of ambiguity just around basic facts. Uh, but the general idea is just knowing what's going on is powerful in itself. And then you've got everyone else. One more uh, way of thinking about our system, right, is we've got the voters, they elect the politicians, and then the politicians make the decisions for us, right? And you only vote every two years um, or every four years or every six years, depending on the office. And so our long-term dream is to make a system where um, you can kind of have proxies, right? So if somebody runs for office and they say, I'm going to run for office, but once I'm in there, I'm going to be polling my constituents every month or every week or whatever they decide. And however they tell me to vote, I'm just going to vote that, right? I'm going to put my brain on a shelf and just do what you tell me. I will be your proxy. So that's kind of, again, long-term thinking somewhere that this could go. Um, this right here is um, just how the Athenians did direct democracy, right? And they had a cool idea of basically randomly selecting people to this upper council that then... Um, set the agenda on how things work, right? So this is just to show that there are historical models for direct democracy and how it works. If they could figure it out 2,000 years ago, um, you know, with not a lick of technology, there's something there that we can build towards or at least be thinking about. So the specific problem that uh, we're trying to address is the idea that right now we don't have an effect on those decisions that get made, right? This was uh, from a research paper published about 10 years ago that found that the average citizen has a near zero impact on the decisions that actually get made, right? So those circles that I showed earlier, that's really just on paper. And even those arrows of the making the decisions, that's really just on paper. At the end of the day, 
what the average person wants does not make it into the policy in the United States of America. So that is our problem. So who decides? Mr. Monopoly Man is the guy pulling the strings, right? Unless you can hire an army of lobbyists, unless you can make donations to a political campaign, unless you can get those meetings with those high-level officials, your opinion isn't affecting policy, right? Um, looking at the climate debate, right? I think everyone in this room agrees that climate is a huge problem, that we should be doing something about it, right? But is anything substantive being done, right? IRA is great. It's a step in the right direction. But I think we can all agree that we want more. We want to be doing a lot more, right? So um, again, there's the, the picture that's painted for us and then the reality, which is a little bit different. So why don't politicians listen? Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. One is the minimum feedback, right? You elect somebody into office and then they've got two years where they don't have to listen to you at all, right? We don't have uh, recall elections in the United States. We don't have uh, any other way to really dialogue with them. Um, and the places where we do, uh, there's a lot of other problems, right? The squeaky wheel that makes the most noise is the one that they're going to listen to. The person with the money is the one that they're going to listen to. Even the most well-meaning politician is going to have trouble sifting through the noise, right? They're getting robocalls to their office. They're getting mass emails to their office. Um, and they, you know, the media environment, again, is oversaturated with a lot of noise and different things. So even if they wanted to listen, they don't have a good way to connect. They can pay for polls, right? Which is one thing that a lot of politicians do, but those polls are usually geared toward how am I going to get elected next, right? They're not geared toward what is, what should I vote on this particular thing? And so that's, um, it's, it's an informational gap that um, we are trying to address. Why don't we do something about it? Uh, organizing is difficult, right? Anyone who's ever worked on a campaign knows that it's really hard. Um, Anyone who's ever been on Twitter knows that it's really hard to, you know, have a constructive dialogue, right? When you're limited to those characters, you can't really have a constructive dialogue. So uh, a lot of reasons why it's hard for us to organize and get our voices heard. Um, combine that with why it's difficult for the politicians to listen. And you've got, again, our opinions not making it into those decisions of how we want to do things. So I am going to... Pass it off now to Sartash for a tech demo. So we made a quick uh, demo recently. Uh, this specific page, actually, um, a lot of the sources and data and inspiration can be, uh, I can definitely thank Derek for helping make Councilmatic a long time ago. And also, um, he worked on a project where he was able to use Google's uh, Civic Information API to find data on all the representatives we have. So um, on this website, I can type in an address. Um, Specifically, I'm going to go with Chicago right now because what, what I was able to do is um, show a list of your representatives based on your address. And also, uh, if it's Chicago specifically, shows a list of the active resolutions that are happening. Uh, these are specifically uh, non-routine active resolutions. Um, city councils deal with a lot of things that most of us uh, would not be interested in, just like you know, basic need to change a road sign or something like that. Um, you can see everything at the city level, county level, um, state level, and national level. Um, but specifically, we want to focus on city level. So this was like the first proof of concept that we had. And then um, we wanted to go into saying, OK, what does this look like if we were able to get a representative that actually signed up and partnered with us and was willing to um, listen to their constituents and in a way where they actually actively listen for you know, this amendment that's happening on the chairman, like they want to know what's, what their constituents think about it. Um, so as a quick fake demo, uh, we were thinking there would be um, some sort of website like uh, page like this. Probably wouldn't look like this. I am not proud of this design. I made this very quickly. Um, but... Uh, uh, the idea is there could be different kinds of polls that are happening. Those polls would be specifically based on uh, active resolutions or active things or real things that are being worked on. Uh, we don't really want um, politicians or people to be able to leverage this to uh, make hot takes like, oh, they want to get an opinion because, uh, you know, everything from Twitter to Facebook is out there for that. Uh, we want to specifically focus on official things that are happening, like real things that they're actually dealing with. So you'd be able to um, 
vote. Um, for example, like you want to add a dedicated bike lane to Halstead. Um, let's say I say yay, but maybe other people don't. Um, and then your vote would get submitted. Uh, and then for those that know how to fake stuff, I'm faking this. Um, uh, then later on, you'd get to see the poll results um, from all the constituents. And when you look at this data, you would know that the people that voted here are people that are in the older person's district. Um, it wouldn't be anyone outside of that. So the hope is that this data would be um, one of the more reliable sources of what your actual neighbors are thinking. We want to make it easy for residents to know what issues that are actually on the table. Right now, it's very hard to know what uh, city council or your state legislator, anybody is actually working on what, like, you know, they'll, again, they'll have hot takes on Twitter all day, but is that actually the thing that's showing up at their desk? Is that actually the thing they're going to be voting on soon? That's a little harder to figure out. Um, we want to focus on having topical civil social interactions. Um, and what we mean by that is um, we're not sure from a UX perspective whether we're going to have things like comment sections or um, other kinds of free text areas yet because those are areas that are ripe for kind of abuse and um, as we design this we really want to think about the most abusive characters being on there and not being able to abuse it um, and we want to make and as a result we're hoping that voices are uh, there's more signal in the noise in the in the voices and, and less noise um, and in order to partner with um, representatives and elective officials we want to you know make sure they also get value from this uh, they're going to get verified, like they're going to get feedback, we're hoping, from verified constituents. The people that are voting are not just, again, random people on Twitter. Um, Elon would not be able to message the older person. Uh, and you'd be able to get real feedback and, and real polling data. And uh, for those, what I've learned in the, in the political world, what I've learned is getting like reliable poll data is very expensive and also like very useful. So this is hopefully going to give them that value. As a differentiator, like you could recreate this thing again similarly on Facebook or as a subreddit or another kind of social media, but there is no way to verify the people that are voting are the people that are actually in your constituency. Um, and there's again, there's way too many ways on those networks. Like those are by nature reactionary. Um, you know, they make money off of attention. Uh, and our hope is that we design the social network with no intention of really, we don't intend to make this a for profit thing at all. Um, and we don't intend to make it make design decisions that would make it uh, where attention is necessary. Um, so our next step is to create a functional polling system, not just a fake demo like what I made, um, and also to find elected officials to pilot with. Uh, we, wanna, we hope that from the very beginning, we are finding um, partnerships of actual local officials that, um, and see what they would want to do uh, and what, how they would hopefully want this polling system to go. We're also hoping to uh, talk to um, people in uh, the elected officials' constituency and, and see what they would want and kind of build it as a, as a partnership with the community. Um, and then beyond that, um, my intention is to probably throw away all the code we wrote and then uh, build an actual robust system. So right now it's all just about proving the interactions. Um, there's a lot of ways we can go with, from the robust system. We can go decentralized. We can go um, uh, all, honestly, I don't want to dive too deep, deep into the tech of it, but uh, it's kind of nice to be able to build an MVP that we don't intend to keep building on top of later. Uh, and how we can um, get some help from y'all, um, we would love helping, getting help partnering with elected officials. Um, anyone out there that's interested in, whether it's uh, you know school board people or alder people or um, county officials, et cetera, um, anyone that's willing to work with us that's an elected official, if you, if you think you have a way to kind of make those connections, that would be amazing. Um, UX design, um, would love to get people that um, kind of love UX, not just from a visual design standpoint, but a how do these design decisions uh, impact human behavior on the website. Um, uh, blockchain and distributed systems, uh, would love to see if there's a way to make this a more trustworthy data source. Um, maybe that is just going with a centralized database. Maybe that's going with a decentralized database. Would love to have those conversations with people that uh, care about that stuff probably more than me. Um, I'm more of a front end developer. Uh, and then, yeah, a white paper working group. We want to make sure that the theory and the fundamentals and values behind what we're doing are sound and we can like stick to that over the course of a long period of time. Um, and then, yeah, if anybody likes front end, um, yeah, I would love to 
collab. Uh, that's it. Questions? Hi. Um, so this is a really cool idea, but I was, and I know that you're very early on in the stages of it, but I was curious if you had, um, I had an idea for how to deal with the fact that social media is very self-selecting when you're dealing with stuff like polls for like who, like what your older person should vote on if the population is self-selecting. I was wondering if you had thought at all about that. Uh, to make sure I understand what you're saying, when you say self-selecting, you mean people that are interested in the poll are the ones that vote on the poll? I guess I mean more generally like people who are interested in being on social media at all. Like I think that they're, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that is a, a serious problem. Um, there is both a combination of, um, it depends on the environment you're in. Like in a, in a city like Chicago, there is a high reach of a lot of social networks. Um, they're not the same social networks. Some people are on TikTok, some people are on Facebook. I'm not on either. Um, but I do hope that, um, it's a very good question, honestly. Uh, and it's something that is going to be a very critical part of, I think, our growth and how we, uh, like, how do we get, you know, I know we can get, for example, people like business owners. Business owners are always wanting to talk to their older people. They're always wanting to figure out how to fix, um, oh, how do we get this road fixed? Or, you know, there's, they love talking about the different kind of crime issues, but then how do we get someone that is working, you know, two jobs and doesn't have time to actually like, vote on that poll? I, it is, Definitely something that we want to invest serious effort into. Um, we don't have a solution yet. And one one thought that we had on that is, is leveraging those those early like local political you know um, champions, right? So if we can get one older person, they have the lists of you know the people who write them and the people who reach out to them often, and kind of leveraging those. Um, we had also thought of like having combining like a, a live aspect of it, right? So if the older person can um, advertise for a town hall, right? And so then you can come in. You don't necessarily need to have the app to participate in that. So yeah, there's a lot of ways that we're exploring that for sure. All right, thank you so much.